Okay, what's up, YouTube? I'm back on the video, and in today's video, we are going to be describing what did Jesus look like. Okay, we're always presented with pictures. You know what I'm saying? Like with it in this book, we are presented with pictures, but you know what I'm saying? We are never given a description of what he looks like. You know what I'm saying? We, we know about the white boy, Caesar Borgia. We know that's a false image. Okay? I'm dealing with history. Okay? Now, if he was supposed to have lived, somebody in his time frame must have seen what he looked like. Okay? Now, you know on my channel I come with nothing but raw facts. Right? So we're going to be coming from, the, if I have to make a part two to this, I will. Most likely I will. So we're going to come from this book right here. With, coming with the pictures, the Black Mary and Jesus and 500 White Churches, Black History Magazine, this book right here, Black Out the Whitewash, okay, uh, we're going to be coming from this book right here, this book is out of print, okay, I got a good deal on this, I've had this book for about two years now, uh, it's called The Messiah Jesus and John the Baptist by Robert Easler, this, is, this book is written back in 1931, okay. That's a gem. This is a gem right here. Okay. Now, um, we're gonna come. We're gonna come from some multiple sources, man. Multiple sources. Now, based off the testimony of what Jesus looked like. Now, if you're waiting, if you're waiting for Jesus to come back, you're gonna have to accept what he looks like. Okay. Now, um, I had did a video a while ago, right? Maybe like a year ago, on this article right here called uh, "This This Racist White Boy Died for Three Minutes and Said Jesus is a Nigger." Now, keep this word "nigger" in mind because just a couple of days ago, somebody uh, came on my channel. Right, I did I did this video uh, last year talking about the second N word, and then here come this guy right here. Named Tim. Two days ago, he says, "Now listen to this." He says, "So I am white, but I grew up in the hood, and I was always confused as to why this word is used. I have asked multiple people since I was a child, and now I'm a grown man, and I still and I he says and I still he says I'm still curious. He says this video popped up." And this makes more sense than any explanation I have ever heard. Thank you. Regardless of my ethnicity, I treasure truth most. So I'm hearing this from multiple, pe from multiple people saying that every time they come across my videos, they always say this. They always say that my videos make sense than any other explanation that they're getting from anybody else and from anybody else's channel. Now, I'm not putting myself above others, but I tell you my channels, I break this stuff down so a third grader can understand this. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, I typed, I did this video a while ago, Racist White, but I'm going to read the article, right? And what I did was, when I typed this in on Google, um, this video I did popped up a couple, a couple of months back, and somebody had... Um, I guess they must have uh, shared it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this is the person right here, my online business builder. They took my video. I don't have a problem with somebody taking my video. All the information is free to charge anyway. But it goes to show you that the information I'm putting out, people are, you know what I'm saying, they, they are leaning towards it, you know what I'm saying, and they are accepting it. From all ethnicities. Now you can see when you click on the video, you're going to hear my voice. Okay, so that's me. Now, we're gonna. So this book right here, the Messiah Jesus, John the Baptist, according to uh, according to Flavius Josephus, right? This book is written back in 931, and you can see they took the the book is out of print. Okay, the book is out of print, but I got it. You know what I'm saying? Now, what we're gonna do is. 
gonna read this article. We're gonna read this article. And this boy said he died and went to heaven. He saw he saw Jesus, right? And he said that Jesus was a was an African American. He was a Negro. Okay? We know who Negroes are. Now, there's a lot of controversy as to regards of uh, the Africans and the African Americans. That there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm beyond that. I'm above that. But we still have to make the distinction between what was documented as what was documented in history. What did they say Jesus looked like? Okay. Now we're gonna be coming from the Bible, right? We're gonna be coming from multiple sources, and we're gonna be coming. We're gonna be dispelling a couple of words how they did a lot of wordplay. Uh, uh, Deception with the wordplay, you know what I'm saying, in regards to certain words. All right, so let's get into this. So let's start off with this, this article, right? This article was written back uh, when it was published. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's read this, right? It says here that uh, a young white Christian boy who briefly, who briefly died on a surgeon's operating table during a liver transplant this past weekend says he met Jesus Christ and he was African American. Right? So this white boy named Billy Landers. Right? Let's, let's read this. It says, Billy Landers, the son of the son of a well-known KKK member in Mobile, Alabama, who was suffering from liver failure, was technically dead for three minutes before being resuscitated. During that time, the 13-year-old claims he visited the afterlife. He says, quote, It was all niggers. He told WKRG News after, after the ordeal. He says, quote, There were a few white people, but they were just entertaining the blacks, like playing basketball. He says, There were a lot of nigger angels watching them play basketball. Landers said, he says, Jesus was a coon too. Jesus wasn't white like daddy says he is. He says, quote, I asked my father, why is Jesus a nigger? He couldn't answer. He says, I've been taught that God and Jesus hate niggers. That God cursed them by, by turning their skin black. That they were mud people. Billy Father's said his son's experience has not made him question white supremacy and the Anglo-Saxon Jesus. He says, quote, It's kind of disturbing to me that he came back with stories of nigger heaven, he told reporters. But clearly my son is suffering from some sort of schizophrenia or something. There's no way Jesus is a nigger. I'm going to have to put my boy on antipsychotics medication. So this white boy said he died and went to heaven to the afterlife and he said he, he saw Jesus and he was a nigger a negro now let's go into the bible Acts 13 and 1 this is Jesus' buddies his, his apostles he was hanging with right Acts 13 and 1 look at the tra different translation right now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers Barnabas, Simeon and, and a nigger. They, they, they try to put this as a misnomer to say nigger, but this nigger. Lucian of Serene. Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. It says, among the prophets and teachers, the church at Antioch of Syria, what Barnabas Simeon called the black man. Why are they changing it? Now, let's go here to the strong concordance. Right? Who's coming up with these definitions? Who's writing this stuff? Like I said, don't take my word for it. Do the research. I don't got to believe none of this stuff. At the end of the day, like I said, everything, all the information that I have put out has been written by the hands of man. By the hands of man. Now, let's go to the strong concordance. Right? Strong's
okay? And we want to look up the word nigger. Right here. Nigger, a proper name of Latin, black. So, Jesus and his buddies were called niggers. Nigger. Nigger. They were called niggers. Nigger, of Latin origin, dark in color. Nigger, a Christian. So if you are professing to be a follower of Jesus Christ of the Bible, you have to accept. You are professing to be a nigger. You are professing to. You are professing to be a follower of a nigger. We know who niggers are. Niggers are black people, so-called African Americans. Now let's go into some of these pictures. Let's go into some of these pictures. Right? So it says, these are images of Isis and her baby Horus of ancient Egypt. Images of the mother and baby go back thousands of years before Jesus, right? It says, this is an ancient wooden sculpture of Jesus in Cairo, Egypt. Now, this is Jesus right here in the middle, right? And here's his buddies, his apostles on each side. And these dudes got afros with beards. Okay? Now, in this book right here, Black Out the Whitewash, right? Okay? So this right here, this image right here, is the earlier catacomb painting of Christ and his disciples gathered at the uh, Eucharist, right? Now this is in black and white. But this is the picture right here in, in color, right? Here he is, black, his disciples, black, okay? This is a wall sculpture in Rome. So ain't picture right here, Italy, of Jesus painted seven years, uh, of Jesus painted years after his death, okay? Here it is right here, okay? Here it is right here. Okay, the late Pope Paul John Paul II kissing the cross of a black Marian Jesus in Rome. Right, here they are right here in the Vatican praying to them. Right? Black images of Marian Jesus in white churches worldwide. Okay? Alright, so we've seen, I've shown these pictures before. This is all in, in Europe, in Russia, in France, Italy. Right? Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's put that to the side. And let's go into this book right here. So we seen from right here. We seen from right here from all from different sources. The white boy said he died and went to heaven. He said he saw Jesus. And he said Jesus was a nigga. We read it right here in the strong concordance. In Acts 13 and 1. That the Christians of Jesus' time. They were called niggers. Niggers. When we go back to the second N word. What is, what is the second N word? Gods and goddesses. A black origin, dark in color. Nigger and Christian. Right? It's what this is saying. A Latin name, black, nigger, the surname, the surname of the prophet Simeon. Okay? So they were called the Christians, the ancient Christians, in Jesus, in Jesus' time, or Yahshua's time, or Yehoshua, whatever name you want to give him, they were called niggers. So I'm quite sure if we saw Jesus. Today, walking down the street, you know what I'm saying, and he's he's the he's the person in the Bible of the New Testament. Walking down the street, how would you be able to tell him from any ordinary from from uh, from any other ordinary so-called black person walking down the street in America? Because 
because we know that the so-called African Americans be calling each other niggas. Okay? So let's read this. Black Nappy in the Man. We're going to get into the hair too as well. Then we're going to go into, into the description of what they say he looked like. His mother, what did Mary look like? His son, uh, what did uh, Joseph look like? Okay? That Stroud of Turin, that's, that's bullshit. That's false. Okay? So it says, you probably already know that Jesus Christ was a woolly-haired black man. Okay? It says, according to the Bible itself, called the Lamb of God, with kinky hair, compared with lamb's wool, feet the color burnt brass, right? And the likeness, and the likeness is resembling jasper and sardine stone. Jasper and sardine stone are also called sard, or sardonyx, are, com are commonly brownish and brownish red. Uh, three female ancestors of Jesus were hermetic, or so-called African, or black people. Okay? Now, we're going to drop down here, and it says here that the earliest pictures of Christ all portray him as black. Now, let's do this one more time. Let's go here to, like I said, if I have to make a part two, I will. Let's go here to uh, the Clarendon Dictionary. The Clarendon Dictionary, 1894. I'm not making this stuff up. Like I said, I don't have to. I don't have to agree with none of this, with nothing nobody wrote. As far as I can, as far as I'm concerned, I can say this is a bunch of bullshit. So you have the Clarendon Dictionary, 1894. Let's go here to the definition of wool. What did they say? Who did they say wool is pertaining to? Because I have a coworker at my job. He's from Nigeria, right? This dude is from Nigeria. Okay, and. He asked me, because I had my hair in an afro at the time when he had got out of my job. He asked, I had an afro and I had, a, I had my beard. I still have it, right? But now I have my hair in, in braids. But at that particular time, he asked me, said, hey, man, uh, how do you grow your hair like that? He said, how come I can't grow my, my facial hair like that? He said, how come, how come my hair don't look like yours? I said, well, um... To be to be honest with you, uh, the, the the genetic makeup between you and I are not the same. Okay, but I told him I said if he and I were to walk into a gas station, and if we were to ask the, the Arabs who work behind who work in the gas station, could he tell the difference between him? The, the so-called guy from Nigeria and myself, could he tell the difference between if, if the guy from Nigeria is, is, will be considered a Negro and me a Negro or a nigger? Because I said I'm quite sure in Africa you all don't call your you don't you all do not call yourself niggers because if you did, that would be considered an insult. Because I told him I said if I act if we said what if I said what if I came up to your parents and called them niggers? They would feel insulted because they don't, they don't, they are not, they do not identify with that, with that name. Okay. They don't, they don't identify with that. All right. So let's keep on going. So he know, he do, do, so I had to break it down to him. Okay. So let's go here to the definition of wool. See, see, these white folks are not, they're not writing this stuff in these books for no reason. Okay? Like I said, you don't got to believe a damn thing I say. So you want the definition of wool. So, if we know that so-called Africans are not considered, are not classified as Negroes, who are? And who do they say Jesus looked like? And we're going to get into Jesus' height. How tall was this dude? You know what I'm saying? So, now just think about this. 
and people are professing to say that Jesus is the God of the Bible. And they saw him. How tall was this dude? How tall was he? Okay? So, we're looking at the definition of wool. In Revelation 1.14, right? It said he had hair like wool. Okay? We're going to get into this hair. Okay? So it says that wool, the salt curled hair of sheep and other animals, closely curled hair of Negroes, Negroes, Negroes. The earliest pictures of Christ all portray, all portray him as black, right? In the catacombs on the Rome, right? What we just looked at, talking about some of these some of these pictures, right? It's in the catacombs. They got all these pictures in the catacombs, right? All these images and things of that nature. Okay? Like, like this. This is the Rome. In the catacombs of Rome, right? They got this. Okay? In the catacombs on the Rome where images of Jesus appear for the first time, black paintings and statues of Christ, the Madonna and biblical characters still survive from earlier Christian worship. And the hard to find classic and eclipses, historian Godfrey Higgins writes on page 130, 138, he says, quote, the God Christ, as well as his mother, are described in their old pictures and statues to be black. The infant God in the arms of his black mother, <clears throat> his eyes and drapery and drapery white, is himself perfectly, perfectly black. The whiteness of the eyes and teeth and the study redness of the lips are, are very observable. Often provoking the establishment with this uh, penchant for flaunting her heretical truth, the lectures and books by the uh, uh, uncompromising scholar Kersey Graves were frequently suppressed and sometimes banned. Who's banning these books? First published in 1875, one such book, The World's 16 Crucified Saviors, continued to be a clandestine bestseller for nearly a century. Centuries, a hundred years. Despite vigorous suppression, on page 56, Kershaw declares, quote, There is as much evidence that the Christian, or you know here that the Christians, that they call Christian niggers, Definition, nigger, a Christian. They called the Christians in Jesus' time, his buddies, they called them niggers. So in Christ's time, this word Christian was not in use. But this word was nigger. And can we verify that this word nigger was in use back in the ancient times? Well, if we go here to the second N word, shit, this is the oldest word that's recorded in so-called history. Go back here to the second N word. Okay? As soon as you type this word, if you type this the second N word in, in on Bing.com, you're going to see my video pops up. First video that pops up. And then this is a, another video that uh, that uh, I did an interview with with Brother Riz and Brother Kali Mai. Okay? So, if we go into the second N word, all right. The second N word is an ancient, sacred name. Okay. This is the this is the oldest word. Nigger is the oldest word of record in the world. It's even in the Bible. Nigger is the ancestor of Christ. The greeting of nigger and nigger was prevalent and the same as brother in the U.S. until the 1940s. So, from, so, so called from the beginning of time, all the way up until the 1940s, this word nigger was a greeting. Was a greeting. It's not a white word or a Latin word. It existed before white people or, or any other people had a written language. Niggers. 
niggas. Amharic niggas, meaning king. The title of the supreme ruler of Abstinia. Okay? Now, so, if Jesus Christ is, is a nigger, he's a black man, a negro, what does that make him to us? Well, what would that make him to me? If he, if he was supposed to be a real life historical person, what would, what would Jesus be to me? Jesus would be to me by me being a so-called Negro and in America a nigger, that would make him my brother. And who killed Jesus? White people. White people. Now, let's keep on going. Listen to what Cursey Graves say. It says on page 56, Cursey declares, quote, There is as much evidence that the Christian or nigger savior was a black man, or at least a dark man. And we're going to prove this in this book, The Messiah Jesus and John the Baptist. So you're, going to, you're about to be blown away at what your, what your so-called savior in the Bible really looks like. And if you're expecting him to come back, He's going to look the same way he left when he, when he's going to look the same way when he comes back the same way he left. If you believe this story in the Bible. I'm just, I'm just getting you prepared for it. Okay? If, if you are professing for him to be your so-called savior, you have to accept what he looks like. You can't just accept his name and say, oh, fuck the image. No, you can't be half-stepping. You got to either accept him as whole or reject him. Okay, now let's keep on going. So, it says here that, um, it says, or at least a dark man, and the evidence is the testimony of his disciples, who had nearly as good an opportunity of knowing what his complexion was as the evangelists, who were meant to say anything about it. In the pictures and portraits of Christ by the earlier Christians, he is uniformly represented as being black. And to make this more certain, the red tinge or the or like the red outlining of his lips is given uh is given to the lips and the only text in the Christian Bible quoted by Orthodox Christians as describing his complexion represent it as being black. Cursey adds what would happen if Christ made his second event or his second appearance to earth as expected by modern day Christians and that he comes in the character of a stable messiah how will he be received by our negro hating Christians would they worship a negro god let us imagine he enters one of our fashionable churches like let's just say that he went to this church right here so you got here, you got here that, that Kanye West went to Joel Austin's church, right? Kanye West went to Joel Austin's church. Is Kanye West telling Joel Austin what Jesus Christ really looks like? No. No, he's not. Not through history. You can see this. Kanye West went to Joel Austin's church. Okay? Let's keep on going. It says, Let us imagine that he entered one of our flexible churches. What would be the results? Would the sexton show him to a seat? Would he not rather point to the door and exclaim, Get out of here. No place for niggas. What a ludicrous series of ideas is thus suggested by the thought that Jesus Christ was a darkie. It says here that the stroud of the Turin stroud, a fraud. So they so they talking about this. This stroud of Turin that these white folks love to promote. Saying this is Jesus' print on his face when he died. They took it, they took the print off his face of blood 
And they come with this bullshit ass image right here. This is bullshit. They come up with this garbage. Talking about this is Christ. This is bullshit. They won't let us have a goddamn thing. It says see that this trial of uh, Turin. It says purported to be the burial cloth of Jesus. This garbage right here. The Turin trial has been proven to be a fraud. Carbon dating indicates the Stroud did not exist at the time of the Fourth Crusade, 1204. The story is thoroughly documented in Turin Stroud by Picnic and Prince, who writes, quote, There is no historical evidence that the Stroud is older than, at the very best reckoning, 650 years. So who came up with this bullshit? This garbage. This this Turin Stroud. This is garbage. This is garbage. This is whitewash. This is this is white supremacy. Listen to this. An ancient Roman coin depicts Christ's African identity. Okay? I'm gonna get into this hair. And then, like I said, I'm about to make a part two our will. Okay? It says, in the British Museum, an ancient gold coin shows Christ as an African with tight, tightly curled woolly hair and a cross behind him. This coin was minted under the second reign of Roman Emperor Justinian II who ruled at two separate times. Separated by 10 years, 685 to 695 and 705 to 711 AD. During his first reign, the gold coins he had minted depicted Christ as a straight-haired European. During his second reign, he had the Christ image on the coin changed to an Africoid image in order to ensure that this depiction was more in keeping with the original traditions of the Byzantine Church, which commonly portrayed Jesus as an African. The obverse side of the coin shows Justinian with a cross behind him also. Listen to this. The Cambridge Encyclopedia wrote, Quote, whatever the fact, this coin places beyond dispute the belief that Jesus Christ was a Negro. Was a Negro. The coin is otherwise of great historical interest, for it was the cause of a war between Justinian and Abdullah Malek, fifth caliph of the Omniads, the former demanding tribute to be paid in these same coins and the latter refusing. So it was a war fought over this coin because they found that Jesus Christ was a Negro. They said, oh shit, we can't have this. We can't have this stuff come out, man. I'm just paraphrasing. Okay? Let's keep on going. Um, so we run, okay, Christ mother, the Black Madonna, is worshipped throughout Europe, like I, what I show here in these pictures. Okay, what I show in these pictures, all right, all throughout Europe, things like that, right? Um, okay, we're gonna read, we're gonna keep on going here, right? Okay, okay, now let's read about some of these gods. Like Christ, the earliest messiahs and gods and goddesses on all continents were black and woolly haired. Buddha of India was black. That's why his woolly hair is always shown in small tight curls, peppercorn style, or in cornrows. Earlier sculptures of him clearly portray his African features of wide nose and full lips. Buddha was adored as a square black stone. In the most ancient temples of Asia and India, the sculpture of the gods and goddesses, goddesses have apricot features and woolly hair and peppercorn style and even dreadlocks. The Fuji, the son of heaven, and the legendary first emperor of China was black and woolly hair. This is in China. The, Z the Zaha of Japan was woolly hair and apricot in appearance. Get the references down here. 
the car of Africa's Nile Valley was the inner soul of Mother Earth, a beautiful ebony virgin who was the heart of the world. Strines of Karnak in Egypt and Karnak in Brittany were dedicated to Kar, the goddess, the goddess of agriculture, especially the growth of grain. She was Kore to the Arabs and Greeks. Ceres or caress to the Romans. The derivatives of her name include cereal, corn, kernel, cardia or heart, care, and cherish. If you cut an apple transversely, you will discover that every apple, every apple has a core, the magic pinnacle, which is her symbol. So, even the word cereal or corn, or kernel, comes from black people's names. Constantly making money off our asses. Let's keep on going. Here the images down here. Moses was a black man, according to the Muhammadan tradition, tradition and early portraits. His hand would turn white, then black, to the other, to the other flesh. Apollo was black and woolly hair like his father Zeus. The world famous Apollo Theater in Harlem is named after him. I'm quite sure a lot of you black niggas used to watch the Apollo. You, you think the Apollo, the, the, uh, the Harlem Theater Apollo just popped out of thin air? The name? No. This is named after a black man. Venus of Villendor is a famous statue of the mother god as she was worshipped some fifteen to 20,000 years ago. Although she is found in most art history books, none mention that she is, she is Afrikor. Her entire faceless head is covered with woolly hair like that of Buddhas. Okay? Alright, let's keep on going. Krishna of India was blue-black. His name means black or the black one. He is always portrayed with black or blue skin. And his hair was woolly and his hair was woolly according to the Cambridge Encyclopedia. And sometimes locked. You see that? This damn encyclopedia and this who, whoever whoever is writing these encyclopedias is telling on themselves. They're telling on themselves. Don't get mad at me. I'm just writing what so-called history has to say. Okay? Now we had not even gotten to what Jesus looked like. What they say he looked like. Now let's keep on going. Like I said, if I make it part two, I will. Tyre. Of Scandinavia was a woolly haired Norse god who preceded Thor as a sky deity. Athena of Greek mythology was black and woolly haired, originated from Africa, Libya. She was later she was later wiped up like the other African gods adopted by Europe. She was also known as Anath, Medusa, and the Egyptian goddess Neth. Okay, we know about Isis as uh, a set. Okay. Let's keep on going. This is uh, Tylson was born of a virgin, black in complexion. Described marvelous and beautiful as Jasper. Splendid temples were erected to him, and he was worshipped as a god. Scotia. Scotia was a black goddess and Egyptian princess after. Which Scotland is named. So the word, so the name Scotland is named after Sco uh, Scotia, a black woman. Kali was known as the black queen in medieval legend and to the Celts as the mother of many races. The Spanish called her Califia and gave her and gave her name to their newly discovered paradise, which is now called California. So your word, so your California is named after a black woman. Quetzalcoatl of Mexico 
was recognized as the Messiah by seers or prophets and astrologers. His head was red. His complexion was black. His hair was woolly. He was never blonde or white. As stated by uh, friars, though he may have been clad in white. We know about, uh, we know about uh, Osiris. You got Mohammed, the one who spoke hard with the Quran. Of Islam was a large mouth, bluish in color, with frizzy hair. His grandfather was black, as the knight, and magnificent. So your Quran was written by a black person. Zeus, the top god and father of gods in Greek mythology, was black and woolly-haired. Having originated in, in Africa, his chief title was e uh, Ethiopes, burnt face. Okay? All of these guys are black. Okay? Daliehe, meaning home of the black god, was the name which the Navajo gave which the, was the name which the Navajo gave to the seven sons of the Pallades. Stop. So we know here that they got caught. So these white folks are constantly talking about some Palladians or white people. That can't be true. Because they say that the Pallades is the home of a black guy. Y'all better wake up. The color black represented holiness and the image of God throughout the ancient world. Historian Godfrey Higgins wrote, quote, The originals of all the gods have been of the black race. The ancients viewed the sacred image of the divine as black. And woolly hair was a sign of divinity called, quote, the hair of the gods. In the next session, we shall discover why. Now, we're going to get into this hair. Okay, we're going to get into this hair. And then in part two, we're going to get into what did, what did Christ look like? Was this dude tall? Was he fat? Was he skinny? Was he, was he short? What, what was he? Shit, we don't know. We got some goddamn pictures. Somebody had to have seen. Somebody, if, if this dude is walking around for three goddamn years, you mean to tell me that then nobody write down what this dude looked like? All we get is revelation that he had woolly hair and feet of burnt brass. I mean, come on now. Don't nobody know what this dude looked like? Come on, man. Nappy hair is divine, the choice of God. So. By, by now, if you've been watching my video, you should already know by now who is God. It says, like Christ, his son, and all the founders of world religions, God himself has kinky, nappy hair according to the Bible. Where God, the ancient of days, is described as having hair like the pure wool. The apocryphal book of Enoch 46.1 states the same. There I beheld the ancient of days. Whose head was white, like whose head was was like white wool. The power. This, listen now. Listen to this now. Listen to how they do a play on words. Listen now. Watch this. Check this out. It says here that the the power that causes galaxies to spiral, stars, planets, so-called planets, and atoms to spin. That causes the double helix spiral of the DNA molecule. This same spiraling power called the spiraling hair, otherwise known as nappy, kinky, curly, crinkly, bushy, frizzy, wavy, woolly hair. Listen to this. The word spin, spiral, and now look at this. We have been taught that this word it's called spiritual. But this is a lie. This word is really called spiritual. Spiritual. They have did a ritual on your ass. They have called, they have done a ritual through so-called symbolism, wordplay, 
for you to hate your hair. And you per- and you perm it out, you press it, you bleach it, you dye it, and you fuck it up your brain cells, putting all that shit in your hair, and that shit is uh, seeping down into your pores and fucking with your brain cells. So this word spiritual is really spiritual, spiritual. Break the world apart. Break this word down. Let's do it. Let's break the world apart. I got to break it down for you. Let me break it down for you. Let me, let's break it down for you. Let, let, me, let me finish reading this. Let's finish reading this. So this word is called, so this is spiral. So, it says the, the supreme power spins spirals in so-called spiritual. The, it moves or spirals the universe. The entire universe ever dances in spirals and, and rotations. Everything in it reflects the spiraling or spiritual. So what's the difference? How, how did this word spiral, how did this word spiral, spiral, spiraling, and this word, this is spiral, spiritual, but how did this word go from being, being from spiral to spiritual? It says everything is alive, quote, so-called with the spirit. The vital principle or animating or animating life force within all living beings. We know the so-called spirit is energy. In many languages, the word for spirit, breath, <clears throat> spirit, breath, and air are identical. Sanskrit, Purana, Hebrew, Ruach, Greek, Numa, Latin, Spiritos or Spiritos. For Breath and life are one. Latin, spiare or spiare means to breathe. Latin, spear, and Greek, spirio means coil. The spiral principle of the universe is what makes nappy hair or spiraling. Napping, nappy hair is, quote, the hair of the gods. Spiraling hair expressing... The spiral principle of creation. Listen to this. The spiral is the movement of creation. The spiral, especially the golden spiral, is the most profound motion in the universe. At the same time, it is the most profound design in the universe, built into all life forms, from seashells to man. The spiraling nappy hair. Your blood spirals through your veins. Plants spiral up from the soil. And nappy hair spirals out from their roots. And nappy hair spirals out from the hair roots. Witness the unique spiral of the world on your fingertips. Ball your hand into a fist and slowly extend each finger and you will see for yourself how the tip of each finger opens in a golden spiral path. So like here, he says, go like this with your hands. And as you open each one, you're going to see. I don't know if you can see that, but you can do it on your own. You're going to see the, um, let me see if I can do this real quick. You're going to see uh, your fingerprint and you're going to see it goes in this direction. And like in the whirlwind, like in the world, like in a, like in a tornado or, or a, a hurricane. Okay? Okay, so now check this out. Um, it says, observe the spiraling, the spiraling of ocean waves and wind, of animal horns, of spirulina, a superfood algae that resembles nappy hair, the spiral in your ears. And flowers and throughout nature. Okay, it says straight haired people also have spirals on their heads. Visible as a whirl pattern with its center in the back of the head, where their straight hair grows out slanting in the world's direction. Woolly haired people have both the whirl pattern 
the world pattern and the individually spiraling strands of Heliox coil spring-like nappy hair, the choice of the gods. It's no wonder that spiraling hair was regarded as a sign of spiral... This, they say this is spirituality, but this is spiral... spirituality and divinity and prized as the hair of the gods. Did Jesus have dreadlocks? Okay? Did he have dreadlocks? Now, we're going to go, we're going to stop, we're going to stop the video right here. Okay? We're going to stop the video right here. And uh, we're going to come to part two. But see, see that, since nature itself is a textbook that reveals the secrets of the universe by literally expressing these principles in the actual form, in the actual form that something takes, my guess is that spiral hair enhances the ability to tune into the most detailed levels or dimensions. The micro within the macro. Both nappy and straight hair people have the world or the big spiral. And surely this allows tuning in at the big level. While the little spirals of individual strands additionally allow the antenna to pick up detail at the most minute level. Does hair antenna possess accelerated properties? You have spiral hair. Okay? And then you have here the hot comb. Okay, this is this is this is deep. This is deep. Now, what I want to do is I'm gonna stop my video right here and we're gonna upload part two. We're getting down to the to the nitty gritty of what did Jesus look like. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop my video right here. My palace read this real quick. So you got Medusa. Hair of the snakes were really dreadlocks. Right? She was an African serpent goddess representing female wisdom and was called the mother of all the gods. Whom she bore before a child... Whom she before, whom she bore before childbirth existed, and typical treatment in uh, mangling African tradition, European quote classic myth made Medusa into a monster, the terrible Gor uh, Gorgon, whose look turned men into stone. So they come up with this bullshit like this with the uh, Titans, Clash of the Titans or whatever, right? Uh, Perseus and shit like that, Medusa. They come up with this this bullshit right here. Uh, Greek Medusa, right? In Greek mythology, Medusa, Medusa was a monster. At Gorgon generally generally describes a winged human female with living venomous with, with living venomous snakes in the place of her hair. So they come up with shit like this. You see how they 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 put this shit up here like this? Put snakes in her hair. But they really, what they really doing is, like they come up with this bullshit right here, um, this right here. I think this is, was the, the latest Clash of the Titans or the Titans, whatever that shit was called. They come up with this garbage, right? But they're making fun of black people's hair. So it said to that, but, uh, they turned her to a monster, right, and all that type of stuff, right? It says the Gorgons were a trinity whose names were Medusa, uh, Skinio, and uh, uh, Uriel, uh, or wisdom, strength, and uh, universality. It says European writers pretended they were monsters, but these are not the names of monsters. Medusa was the destroyer of the aspect, was the destroyer aspect, aspect of the triple goddess called uh, Neph in Egypt and Athena in Greece. Medusa's name is derived from the Egyptian Ma'at True, which is also which also gives us the words medicine, mathematics, and, and Sanskrit uh, Medha, female wisdom. Okay? Uh, Ezekiel 8 and 3. God suspended him by the locks of his God suspended him by the locks between heaven and earth. The dreadlock 
prophet Ezekiel reported that God manifested in golden brightness before him and his associates. And quote, and he put forth the forms of a hand and took me by the lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. So we know the spirit, they, they did a play on words. <clears throat> they did a play on words. This is spirit. Well, sp spiritual. So a spirit is a whirlwind. Biblically, blacks were sheep, white people were goats. It says sheep, quote, sheep originally referred to black people with their woolly hair and typically peaceful nature. Woolly hair Jesus was called the Lamb of God and the Prince of Peace. Africans of the Nile Valley even made wigs from sheep wool to match their woolly hair. Goats, quote, goats, symbolize white people. They are naturally very hairy people with straight hair and typically aggressive and typically, and, and typically aggressive natures. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right. Let me see how much time I got left. Like here. So he's talking about this hot comb and things like that. But let me see if I can read this. I go to part two. So this is called the anti nappy syndrome. Fused the worldwide the worldwide war war on nappy hair. Okay. This is the, this is with the hot comb, right? They're trying to straighten their hair out with these chemical relaxers and all this shit or whatever, right? Okay, and it says that now. Listen to this: it's facts. But the worst damage appears to go unnoticed or even unchallenged or unacknowledged, since this has become accepted normal behavior. This is the damage to the psyches with which owns the scalps. This psycholo this psychological damage is acquired nappy syndrome. A form of self-rejection and self-hatred. The outward manifestation of this inner this, this, uh, disease is the war, the war on nappy hair. Uh, Anti-nappy syndrome uh, perpetuates and holds this war in place. The war on nappy hair was taken to such extremes, listen to this, that in some Caribbean islands during the 1980s, not only was it illegal for blacks to have locked hair, but if they dare to display it in public, they could be arrested. They could be they could be arrested or even shot and killed on sight by the police, who were black themselves. Nick Stillouts and nappy foreigners sporting dreadlocks attempted to visit these areas, were detained at airports and not permitted to stay in the country unless they wore wigs or hats to hide their locks. See that? Man, let me stop the video right here. And come back to part two. And we're going to get into what did Christ look like. Was this dude short? Was he fat? Was he skinny? Was he tall? What was, what this dude look like? And you know I come with nothing but facts. So, this is part one. I'm about to come with part two. So we have seen here that the word we have been trained to call spiritual is really spiritual. Because look at the words. You have the words spiral. Same damn word. Spiral. And you have spiral. Spirit. We've been trained to spirit. But this is spirit. Spirit troll. So let's break the word apart. You have. Let's break this word apart. So you have spy. Right? You have spy. Ritual. Ritual. What's a ritual? A spell. You have cast a spell on yourselves. Because you have been trained to hate your hair. Spy ritual. Spy ritual. Spiritual. Spy ritual. They're telling you. They're telling you right here. Spiraling, spiral troll, spiral. With that being said, peace, and I'll see you in part two. Thanks for listening and watching.